Hi everyone, um, I'm very glad to, to be here at the occasion of uh, this exhibition at Belfast Photo Festival. Um, I would like to present you, of course, uh, this project. Uh, its, name, its name is Event Horizon. Um, it's a project that I, uh, I finished it in 2016 for my diploma project. So it begins uh, during my studies. Its original form is um, a book, uh, this one. Um, uh, and uh, yes, uh, um, there is like um, two years after, there is uh, like other form uh exhibition like uh, the one that is in belfast right now i prepare for you a pdf of present of presentation i will share my screen right now and uh, so the book that i just show you is here um, the first, the first thing is that um, it begins during my studies. Uh, at that time, I, I, I was very, I'm still very passionate with scientific subject, but more in a science fiction aspect. Um, I'm uh, the, my references are uh, often. Uh, science fiction movie, uh, I would say uh, almost more than photography, because um, I understand uh, very quickly that um, movies uh, are also a good medium to, to make images about uh, like uh, uh, um, 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 uh, stories of science fiction and how to make a visual um, 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 uh, uh, how to show uh, an imaginary uh, imaginary world so um, event horizon is like um, an, an astronomical phenomenon uh, that designated um, the boundary around the black hole beyond which event cannot propagate propagate so therefore there is like warping surrounding space time so it was a, at that time this gate was good for me because um event horizon is also a very poetic word and uh, in this um uh name or word you have also two aspects of photography which is space and time and it allows me to um, to deal with photography and not necessarily uh, scientific images um, here's some uh, spread of the book um, for me, this work was an attempt, uh, a personal attempt to construct uh, cosmology through photographic means. And um, cosmology uh, can have a different meaning. It depends on uh, the field where the word is used. In astronomy, it's, it's uh, like a field where scientific, scientific are researching uh, uh, an explanation to the origin of the world. So they observe stars and uh, astronomical phenomena very, very far uh, in order to see uh, uh, um, uh, the past. So if they, if they reach to see uh, very far, maybe they can find an explanation to the origin of the world. And if you take the word cosmology in a more metaphysic, metaphysical way, it's more uh, an attempt to understand the world and restore it. So these two de definition or meaning allows me to, in a way, to be 
uh, in a scientific fact field, but also uh, it allows me to create image, more um, uh, imaginary image about the subject. And um, the I group- Quentin, sorry yep. to interrupt you. We can't see your screen. Oh, okay. If you can just try the share screen again. Okay, I will do it again. Yeah, is great. It, is it fine? Perfect, thank you. Perfect. Um, so this is the first slide, so the book. And um, so this work is an attempt to control cosmology through photographic means and is located between a documentary practice and, a, and a experimental in photographic medium. Uh, documentary was um, great for this project because it allows a free formal approach and remain a creative work. So it fits to the meaning of cosmology in the metaphysical way. And uh, it allows a subjective perspective on a portion of the world. So at the beginning of the project, um, for two years, I collected uh, images made in various observation sites, which served me to lay the scientific foundation of uh, a universe, uh, science fiction universe, which I am looking to build. So uh, at the beginning, I, I, I was in France, in different um, uh, observatory, like uh, uh, radio uh, observatory also, which is very interesting because they they make images uh, on something that you can see only X-ray. So it was uh, another argument for me that speaking about all of this subject is also uh, uh, at some point creating uh, images. So. Um, that's it. And um, I went also in uh, in Auroville. It's a utopic city uh, near Pondichéry, where um, uh, architects. Uh, it was uh, a project from the seventies where architects were. Um, had a very free uh, um, approach of architecture. And so in the book, you have different entities um, uh, roam along an, an ended, endless timeline. Like I make different categories, animals, uh, organic matters, technological artifacts, and architectural objects. Um, all seen alike by a non-discriminating gaze as, as if they inhabited this uh, universe with equivalent agency in a flat ontology of sort. So at, the, at some point, you see the spread of the book, at some point, um, to, to the idea of the book be, um, came very early in the project. So I know at that time um, when I was doing pictures that at the end, uh, it will be a book. So I started to construct some, some frieze like this. Um, and uh, the book is also bind, binded by a Japanese uh, technique. So the, the page, uh, uh, you can, the image going through the page and never stops. So the freeze that you see here is divided into different uh, double page. Here, here are some architecture, architectural houses uh, that I found in Auroville, um, which is uh, very similar to uh, maybe a, a lunar base or something like this. Um, and in this in this uh, project, there is a lot of uh, uh, photograph uh, images 
who came from different techniques. Um, for example, there is also images from Pinol's camera that I uh, let in the tree during several months to to catch the the trajectory of the sun of the sun the sun path. So, for example, uh, in, in the image uh, on the right, uh, each line that you can see is the, is the, um, one day pass of the sun. So you you can see that the sun is going down uh, depends of the season um, and also here uh, I, uh, the, the pinot was installed uh, in a, a team at a sim attraction park of dinosaur so at the end this image is almost uh, you have the sensation of an impossible image, but also several um, layers of time are in the same uh, image. Um, for example, here, I will show you. You have like, the sun, which is, uh, for example, on, on the left, uh, there is obviously the sun on, uh, in the background, but also sometimes birds are coming uh, near the, the pinholes and start to, to make some holes in the pinholes. So the light is entering, the water is entering, and uh, at the end, there is like uh, some mushroom, so there is different layers of time, a cosmic layers, a macroscopic layers, and a, a microscopic one. And um, so the book is like an endless timeline. Uh, theoretically, you can start it uh, wherever you want, and um, and yes. Here is uh, a first exhibition that I made in Berlin. So it was my, my first exhibition. So there is, uh, at that time, uh, um, uh, uh, first uh, uh, utilization of a wallpaper because the question was how to translate all of these ideas made for the book into exhibition. So. I define uh, different um, arguments like uh, 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 I would like it uh, immersive in order that the the, uh, the people can not escape from the images and uh, they can also be very near from the print or have like uh, an, an overall view and. Um, here is another image, uh, a second exhibition in Derby uh, at Forma Festival. The images that you can see on the background, the, the wallpaper was also a triptych that I made during all the process of the project. The first image uh, is on the left. So each time that I found like some object that inspires me, uh, or uh, object that uh, I photographed uh, in another part of the book. I put it on, on the table uh, in my room. And at the end, I used a, a, la a laser to link them all um, to create like a, a kind of a constellation. Um, here's some uh, views of foam exhibition, from Tale exhibition, one in Amsterdam uh, uh, and one uh, in London. So the wallpaper is still uh, on the use. Which was also very interesting. It's uh, here we have some offset uh, prints uh, from the book. So when the, when the first print is made, 
the images and the pages are all mixed, which is also very related to the project because um, uh, if you if you speak of uh, event horizon, you can easily accept that also images can be switched uh, uh, can be switched like this. And at the end, uh, another view, uh, they, um, kind of similar of the exhibition in Belfast, uh, which is more giving the sensation uh, of a cave, um, um, a painting cave. Uh, so I use uh, also some, some lights that are often used uh, when archaeological uh, when people is uh, studying our ar ar archaeological places um, maybe i can switch off this sharing screen and come back here And yes, so um, the, maybe I can show you some pictures here on the book. So the book also is made in different, I started to construct the layout of the book by using simple, um, uh, I put all of, the images on the ground and start to adjusting, adjusting them uh, in order to have this double page. So I re-photographed it. And the more you go in the book, the more the layout is like digitalized. And at the beginning, it's only images side by side. They can, they, as I said, before the binding is like this so it never stops uh, and imaging uh, also on this page but also on the back and you can go and go and the more you go in the book the more pictures are mixed with digital collage you have also some pinholes image with very, which gives you um, the very surprising results. And those laser with table. And at the end, it begins to, to be digitalized with collage and also photogram here. And yes, and I will be happy to answer more questions uh, just after. And thank you for listening uh, about this project. Hey, so that's my turn I now, right? Does it work? Can you hear me? You want to talk to him? Yeah, you're good to go, Benoit. I just want to be sure that everything is working correctly. And so I think I can just start uh, sharing my screen also and let me know if everything works. Here we are. Can you see the screen, the images? Hope so. Okay, so <clears throat> just going to start now. Uh, thank you. Quentin, it was super interesting to hear you talking about your work. We know each other from a few years, but I never uh, had the opportunity to listen to your work. So it was a pleasure. Thanks so much. Uh, I'm not going to go in this presentation too much into details about the work that um, is in the festival. I'm just going to try maybe more to explain you a bit how my work have been um moving during the last years to uh, to be what it is now and i think it makes more sense uh also with the conversation that we're gonna have later 
So um, starting now with um, with another project, basically. So we are here in uh, 2015 at Ecal. <clears throat> so the same school in Lausanne that we did together with uh, with Quentin. And uh, that was a project called uh, Geological Index of the Landscapes. And um, basically, uh, does it work? Should I do that? Yeah. And basically, that was uh, a project uh, which is trying to classify every element that compose uh, the landscape. Um, at that time, I was interested uh, in the tension between emotional and ration, um, rationalism. Uh, it's been, I, I worked pretty slowly, so it was a pretty long process. I think the first pictures have been shot in 2010 and uh, finished with a book published in 2018. Um, but I think the, 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 during the, the, the long process, I was trying a bit to balance uh, the work between the production, the researches, um, and I used a bit this time to reinforce uh, my working methodology and also trying to build um, a plastic and a conceptual rigor um, because I think at, at, at that time I was um, feeling the need to build more uh, complete and also more uh, consistent work. So that was uh, a few images of the first exhibitions, uh, which was the, the first form uh, of the projects, but the main form of the project arrived in 2018 by a publication. Um, so basically the, the main form of this work uh, is the book called A Geological Index of the Landscape. And it plays a bit with the, um, also the idea of uh, scientific researches and the form of the encyclopedia. Um, so basically, in the, the book is built uh, through a classification system, um, which is pretty uh, arbitrary, but uh, I felt interested by working in something really emotional, like the, the landscape and a bit this kind of romantic idea of, uh, of walking in the lands and making pictures. But for me, it was interesting at this time trying to confront a bit this um, this historical fact of uh, process of photographers with more uh, conceptual and um, and more scientific uh, forms. And I think it's uh, while I was working on the book, um, and also by working on, on, the, on the book, I use it, I use the images and the process of, uh, of the bookmaking uh, to use it a bit as a, as a toolbox. And, uh, and by uh, doing this, I started to raise um, the main questions in my work uh, now as the question of the necessity of using a camera, for example. And at some point, by thinking of this, uh, I stopped a bit at some point to travel to make pictures of landscapes, and I became more closer to the studio to build more constructed images and be able to be more precise um, with the elements that I was uh, working with and I was uh, putting into the frame. Because um, I was also working with this project in, in the, the idea and the philosophical idea of what is the landscapes and the idea that the landscapes can exist only through the representation. And so the representation exists through the frame and with the frame we can um, analyze which elements can be in the picture and uh, make a list of it. And it was kind of interesting for me to deconstruct all these elements and to reassemble them into a book or different uh, type of forms. So at some point, uh, I stopped a bit using the um, basically going outside making pictures, but became closer to the studio. And uh, at some point, I leave a bit totally the camera to arrive to uh, this project, with, with, uh, which was just three installations. Um, so I finished the book in 2018. And the year after, I didn't really felt uh, the necessity or the sense of uh, using the camera anymore. But I was uh, more interested about the elements uh, themselves and their materiality and how they can interact with the viewer in a space. 
But uh, I was still super um, interested into iconography and photography. And for me, it was super interesting to still work um, with the tools of the photographer and use a bit this emergency of the photography studio and still working with the tripods and keep this reference uh, to the images and, the, and their constriction. Um, I think by working this way, it's, it, it liberated me and uh, it transposed a bit my work into something more plastic and polymorphic. And uh, I had the, the, the feeling that images were already invading us and uh, I thought it was important to rethink the status of photography through uh, setting my work in volume and, and spaces. And uh, I think it gives me more tools um, uh, to work through questioning the, this, this, uh, this idea of the photographic image and, uh, and its impact on our perception of the world somehow. Um, so now I'm gonna start a bit more precisely with the with the work that I'm showing some samples uh, in Belfast in the, the the photo festival, and so the the project is basically so the project is called Escape from Paradise, and uh, basically it's um, it's uh, an iconographic uh, research uh, in which I use the the Hawaii Islands and the Pacific Ocean a bit as um, an observation laboratory. Um, I was super fascinated by um, the notion of, uh, or more, more precisely the Western popular uh, perception of the exoticism and its construction. Uh, I was wondering why, um, what was the images that I had in mind while I was thinking about exoticism but also why I had these images in mind. So I started a bit um, some researches about this fact and I decided to not travel anymore to make pictures also a bit because of this uh, ecological question of tra traveling for making a pictures uh, which already exist basically. So I decided uh, to, to stop traveling and, uh, and start collections of uh, images and make them traveling to the studio. And it started with uh, with these sunsets uh, that I found uh, really basically on eBay. I was super uh, interested in the uh, a bit outdated um, aspect and um, why uh, are they supposed to be beautiful, but at the same times, why are they uh, totally outdated? Um, but anyway, so I started uh, different kind of collections and I worked with uh, different elements, um, not only for the, the representation that was on the images, but also with um, the materiality of the, um, of the images themselves. So for example, these images uh, was posters ordered on eBay that I re-photographed with the direct flash on the, on the glossy paper. So basically the flare of the flash, the light of the flash and the paper made this uh, giant flare. And by looking at these, the images became two things at the same time. They were related to the, this outdated uh, iconography of the beautiful sunsets, but at the same time, they also became related to the, um, the violent history of the nuclear uh, deaths in the, in the Pacific Ocean during the, the 20th century. <clears throat> But uh, basically, I think I, I try to, to see the work um, as, a, as a kind of frame or a space uh, in which different um, historical elements can interact uh, through the perception uh, we have of them or I had of them and uh, through the shape I can give to them. And uh, I try to, to build the tension uh, from from which uh, new reading grids uh, can emerge. So basically, there is um, a pretty strong uh, in which objects there is always a pretty strong uh, historical research behind it. But uh, but I try to work. Um, I try to stay away of the of the documentary. So I use the the historical facts to to play or to build a, the dialogue between the object and the images. But I don't. I try to don't use the history as a, as a stand for for the work. I'm 
more uh, interested by trying to stretch the question that emerged from the pieces than, uh, than trying to make a work that illustrates uh, theoretical research. So in the work, um, as you can see, that, that there is different type of objects, images, and they are uh, built also in the in different kind of way, um, more sculptural way. And I try to be super also precise in which uh, material I, I use to present the images or how a sculpture can dialogue with a picture and how a picture can become a sculpture and how an image became an object and how I can find, uh, how or, or how I can extract an image from an object. And I can I, I kind of try to, to play with these transfers of images and symbols to kind of break them uh, at some points and try to, to see how we can um, refine some uh, historical issues. And, um, and yet, so basically that's it. So at the, the, in the work, there is all these, these elements that, that I don't have that much time to go deeper in, uh, in the precision of the elements, but, um, but yeah, you can uh, find basically pineapples, uh, sunsets, uh, Hawaiian shirts, uh, flowers, and uh, all of these objects have these pretty uh, beautiful or popular and outdated perception of tourism or mass tourism. But by collecting these objects, I tried at some point to put myself in the, in the skin of the collector. And uh, while trying to be a collector, you have to be pretty precise in the researches to, to master the subject. So I discovered that behind every um, every element, there is a pretty violent history uh, through colonization, globalization, um, ecological issues with uh, nuclear testing, um, uh, and yeah, and so on. And also, for example, with the with it, with this this piece, which is a, a shirt, so it's a cyanotype on on fabric, then sewed as a Hawaiian shirt that was also super interesting in how uh, we can read images and how we can perceive uh, objects or images that depending on the, the support on, on which they are. For example, here, it's pictures of the two atomic bombs dropped on uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, but printed on the Hawaiian shirt, they start to become small fishes. So the work is based um, in this tension between uh, kind of beautifulness and violence. And uh, it's try to raise maybe this question of um, how the perception of the world is uh, built around the kind of watered down propaganda uh, through this Western uh, superpower um, representation of the world somehow. Here we have, um, motifs uh, of how in shirts so basically the 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 object of the shirt uh, become an image again and I'm just gonna check the clock yeah and here is a few uh, images also of installations because now i'm also working with the space or so images uh, installations sculptures and i try to work uh, using the photography as a reflexive tool, not only a, a production tool. Here is a, uh, an exhibition view, which was last year in, uh, in Vevey, the festival. Uh, and I filtered the, the light from the windows, um, which was also uh, a reference to a book of uh, John Hersey called uh, Hiroshima. And, uh, and I try also to to change a bit the, the perception that we have the images and the space through different type of um, installations. Here was um, more a room about archives, like works more as an archives. I try also to keep the, the images uh, mobile at some points. Yeah, so it's been pretty quick, but I think um, that's it like that. Uh, thank you very much. And I think we can uh, start maybe later the conversation. Yep. 
Okay, thank you very much, um, Benoit and Quentin. Can you hear me? Is it okay? Yes. yes. Okay, perfect. So at Ecover, so to ask a, a series of questions. So first of all, like it was great, like to have uh, the opportunity to uh, to hear both of you, like talking about your work, since there's a lot of things that are kind of common, but obviously it looks very different at the end. <laughs> but uh, we're going to also discuss a little bit your method and uh, the way you uh, you envision uh, your project. Um, um, to make things a little bit clearer, I'm going to just uh, ask a series of questions uh, individually for a couple of minutes. Uh, and then like um, the second part of uh, the discussion is going to be uh, like general questions like to uh, open a discussion and then like uh, the question from the public. So I would like uh, to start with Quentin. Uh, thanks a lot for your presentation. And um, I was wondering like if you could tell us because there is uh, always this curiosity for scientific research, uh, research in your work. And uh, the most significant way is your desire to uh, produce or to observe cosmologies, as you show uh, in the uh, event horizon, and to extrapolate from the origins of black hole, for example. Uh, where does this passion and familiarity for science come from? And uh, how do you get this confidence somehow to tackle this question that seems very uh, quite big to, uh, to uh, address in photography? Yes. Mm, I, I, I would say that when I choose the, the scene for the, the, the team for, for this project, I wanted, of course, to talk about something that interested me in everyday life and us to be able to, to work on it for a long time, obviously. But uh, I also admit that the choice of this project uh, is also connected with the fact that my father was an astrophysicist. So it allows me to, to bring back some, something uh, more personal in the project also. And um, so I grew up spending uh, afternoons uh, at the observi observatory from, from fantasizing about my father's work like uh, uh, every child uh, might do. And the the conversation um, I have with him is actually very, um, it corresponds very well with the approach that I have in uh, this complex scientific subject, because um, there is a sort of a great gap between a fantasy vision, because I'm not an expert and I'm also, uh, I'm fascinated by all of this, uh, uh, astronomical event and a factual and purely scientific vision uh, from experts uh, and uh, and also um, uh, from my father at some point uh, mm -hmm. and uh, those two aspects uh, is very interesting for me because um, you can't um, speak about I, I think you can't speak about a subject with one angle even if this angle is from uh, the, the the experts one and uh, yes the the particularity of this project is to have like a, a sort of naive uh, angle of the subject that allows me to create images and be uh, enough free to to play with uh, the medium of photography. And on, on the other end, uh, be aware that there is also some scientific facts that could uh, guide my, uh, my, uh, my creation, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, uh, Event Horizon transform uh, the physicality of reality somehow, or like a, a physical environment. Uh, in a way that are sometimes close to psychedelism or science fiction, as you, you said. And uh, as I, you assume that um, you have a documentary approach, I was wondering what is the relationship to the real places and objects and the 
other entities that you have chosen to create uh, mm. uh, from 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 uh, yeah the, this object and and and, and uh, things that like you have chosen like to create your categories um, are they magic uh, places or magic objects in themselves or what are yeah. the the way you I would say seeing? that um, if um, if you have the the idea to finally create a, a, um, a world um, uh, in a project from, from scratch, you have to organizing uh, uh, what you will show. Um, and uh, for this, my techniques was to create some uh, family of pictures. And uh, like I said in the presentation, there, there was uh, for me like four or five family, um, animals, organic matters, technological artifacts, architectural. And the, the, the reel becomes uh, a, a tools like photography to, like the tools of photography, the reel becomes also a tools to get some uh, images that you, need or you think you will need to 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 build piece by piece uh this this world or this cosmology and um and yes this approach is uh very related to the the definition of cos cosmology from a metaphys metaphysical point of view um and try to I try to set up a system that allows us to allows me to apprehend uh, uh, this vision and to restore it for for another another people and um, the idea of the photographic atlas is also very near because you are um, um, you are gathering images that seems heterogeneous um, uh, and forcing new association um, uh, between images. And in, the, in this way, uh, I would say that a third images appears, it's uh, mental images. If you bring two, diff two very different imagine, images and you force the association, um, the, the sensation that I have and maybe uh, 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 people are is like there is like uh, an imaginary one uh, created in, in the mind and that's the that's the system that I try to set up in, in this project mm -hmm. uh, yeah and like maybe you can say one or two words about the architectural dimension because it's also very present mm -hmm. you, if there's something uh, like when we see like the kind of buildings that interested you like yeah they are also a, they have a certain story you know mm -hmm. um, yes I was searching a place uh, where um, I was myself uh, probably surprised by the architecture and um, the place where I go is Auroville. And in this place, uh, um, built in, in, in the 70s, um, it was a project when, uh, where um, all people should be live uh, together um, without a religion problem or nationality problem. And, a lot of uh, occidental architects came in this area and make the project that they can do uh, at home. So they used uh, a lot of uh, materials from 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 uh, just near uh, just near the place, like uh, like uh, bricks and everything. Everything is like a, um, it's like. A, vernacular architecture and the shape of all of those buildings are so surprising that I was uh, telling myself okay if I had to choose a type of architecture I should choose uh, the one that I never seen before and uh, so that was the reason from my my uh, travel uh, in in Orville. 
Okay. Um, this one question, uh, you, you said huh, you, you used uh, very different techniques uh, and um, the panel camera has uh, like a specific, specific dimension or, yeah. or place like in, uh, in, in uh, these different techniques, especially regarding the way you deal with time or temporality. So could you just tell us a little bit about the way you, you, yeah. you, um, you, you use Pinot, it? Yeah, using Pinot's camera is a, a kind of a, um, parallel photographic activity for me. Um, I hang Pinot's for several months it, it can be in the trees or in the street or um, often safe place uh, uh, where i i'm sure that uh, no one could uh, uh, remove it and um, i hang them uh, for several months in the in the direction of the sun and to capture the changes of the sun trajectory what i like in the result of these images is that uh, several layers of time are superimposed. Um, like I said, there is like a cosmic time, which is uh, the time of the sun, but also macroscopic and microscopic one. Um, uh, uh, indeed, uh, it often happens that the pinhole is pierced and then mushrooms or other bacteria start to develop directly on the paper and gives place to very uh, surprising and beautiful visual. And this technique is also very close, I would say, to a scientific approach in a way that uh, uh, it's empirical and you have to try, correct, redo, uh, observe to get the good results. And it's very similar to a scientific approach. It's a way for me also to reappropriate uh, a, a domain normally reserved to the expert of astronomy. So you <laughs> can observe stars on sun at home. Fine. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I'm going to ask also a couple of questions to Benoit before like asking more general questions to both of you uh, and including also uh, some questions from the public. So uh, Benoit, thanks a lot for the presentation. Uh, so in uh, Escape from Paradise, um, it gives the, the impression that we are discovering the remains of an ancient civilization, or that we are engaged uh, in a kind of forensics, uh, which will reconstruct the constituent element of a culture from uh, its fragments. Uh, at some point, you use the expression, a kind of visual archaeology of the future to speak about your approach. And I would uh, be curious to know how this expression relates to um, to the way uh, we envisioned this project, or you envisioned uh, this project? Mm. Uh, it's pretty funny because I, I really like the the, the idea of uh, forensics in the in the work. I, I never really thought about that in that way, but it sounds pretty like natural to me when you when you when you say it like that. I think it can be. Um, it can be related to my way to work. Uh, like for example, in this work, uh, the, the project really builds through different fragments. If you want, like there is the Hawaiian shirts. So I think through the, the, the shirts, I searched the pretty researches through the history of Hawaiian shirts. And it's guided me to different historical facts, which are some um, pretty violent, some really interesting. And uh, I think there is in every element that I've been working with, there is uh, history of facts. So I was studying um, in different kind of way, but I was studying all these elements before to put them together or before to use them as a piece of the work. Because there is a lot of elements that I still have, but I never used them. Uh, in the work, there, there is some material that are um, used only for the research, and there is some element that became uh, pieces of the artwork somehow. And uh, I think that the, the idea of the archaeology um, for the future, for me, it was interesting uh, when I, I worked with the archives. I 
worked with uh, two different archives, like images. Uh, one of one was uh, images from the National Archives and Records Administration from the U.S., uh, where I found some, um, like now released, but uh, but images that was classified at this time about military operation on the Pacific Ocean. Uh, where there is, uh, for example, images of ev evacuation of people that was uh, living on, um, on different islands. So they evacuated these people to make these nuclear uh, tests, uh, which is pretty violent. Uh, and I found other, and the other ar archive basically is an issue of Life magazine from December uh, 1951, which became because I was making researches uh, on the Hawaiian shirts and uh, this issue of Life magazine, there is um, President Truman uh, wearing a Hawaiian shirt on the cover. So the cover of the magazine is really like playful. There is the US president smiling, wearing a Hawaiian shirt with the uh, palm trees on the background. And inside of the, of the magazine, there is some uh, articles about uh, military operations, but there is also uh, kind of advertising or little stories with uh, soldiers having a party on this Hawaii uh, theme or topic. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was really super interesting to put these two archives together now, because at, at this time in 51, it was not possible to have these images at the same time. Like one archive was classified, was for uh, just uh, military and political uses. And the other one was for people. And I think like today we can put these images together and see what happened between these images and a bit how Quentin was uh, speaking before sometime, uh, which is interesting in the photography work is not what is represented on a picture. It's the space between these two pictures that, that start to, to build a narrative or a tension or something. And I think that's more how I start to work. So by collecting different objects, putting them together, I start to reconstitute the, the, the history a bit. Uh, I try to, to break a bit the, um, this uh, constructed um, propaganda uh, around this beautifulness of the, of the ocean. And I try just by putting elements together to see how we can uh, rebuild the, the history. And I use the, the, um, the words uh, archeology span of the future because at the point I was trying to find a, a form or a way to, uh, to present the work as, um, as, a, as a whole. And I was thinking about a, a time capsule, like how to put all the work in a time capsule that the future civilization can open and without uh, the same language that we're using today, how they can try to rebuild the history by images and objects. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Uh, you also told me that you refuse to be a slave uh, to the medium, like the photographic medium, and tend more and more to use the image and photography as a reflective tool. So can you tell us a little bit uh, how does this act of liberation mani manifest itself uh, concretely in your, in your work on your, or in your creative process? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't. I, I don't know exactly how how it, it how it becomes. But at some point, I was. I feel like I need something in my work. The images was not enough. Uh, I think there is something about the dimension. Like there is different different way to answer these questions. Maybe the first can be just about what is the picture today and how we like we uh, perceive or how we look at the pictures. And I feel like the. Um, the relation that we have with images is really super uh, direct. For example, like there is so many images in the street and outside, so we don't spend time to see a picture and, and spend really like a lot of time to try to read it and think about how uh, how we like we perceive it, what is behind, what we can like. Everything is super like really direct. For example, if you make a picture of a chair and you show a picture of a chair of someone, gonna first thing that he can say is, okay, this is a chair. He's not gonna say, this is a picture of a chair. And for me, this is super important in my work. I don't want to have a viewer who just see an audience and say, okay, that's, and stop at the representation. I think uh, I need some more dimensions 
to be able to build this kind of new reading read, like why, why a picture is on the, on the floor or why this picture is on the shirt or and how by making or trying to build few tension in this way, we can try to, to attract people in some layers of creating images. So at some point, I think I was frustrated by, by the images. And also, I think it was also maybe an act of the, like I spent a lot of years, uh, almost 10 years, you know, really 10 years studying photography. And at the end, I felt the, like now I'm a photographer, I have to make photographs. And, uh, and I think I, I had this need to liberate myself and try to take risks and try to make sculpture, but make a sculpture as a photographer and see how references from the photography uh, world somehow can read a sculpture and how the inverse can be done at some point. Yeah, that also leads me back to this question, like because you developed a reflection on the shifting stages of the photographers um, and artists, like to produce new images in a world where photography overwhelms. Yeah. And um, I would like to know what are the particular challenges that photographers and artists face today? And in your opinion, what is their main responsibility as uh, image uh, makers, basically? I think there is a lot of different responsibilities and I think it depends on what kind of work you are working on. But I think just being conscious of what you are doing while you are producing an image, uh, I think just thinking about this and being precise on how this image needs to be perceived, even if you know that, of course, there is some urgence and you cannot force everybody to see what you want them to see on the picture. But what I was like, the first thing is there is so many images about producing a new work to, to show that, hey, I'm a good photographer. I can, I can make a good picture. Like for me, there is so many good pictures everywhere. Like you can work in every art schools or I, I have the pleasure to be back at ECAL uh, almost every year. And when you see the work of first year students, like the pictures are great. No worry with that. Like all pictures are like, technically beautiful, everything's fine, but I think it's the 21st century. And if, you, if we want to, to do something with images for real, I think it's important to recognize that it's not enough just producing beautiful images. I think it's important to, to build a purpose uh, somehow. Uh, but I think there is also something more scary to me is uh, if you think about regular schools, like when, when children or kids learn how to read or write, uh, they know how to do it with words. They learn how to do it with words, but they don't learn how to do it with images. And I think like it's, it's, uh, it's obvious that every, like today we are, uh, we are writing with images uh, almost uh, almost at the same level that we work with, with words. That, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Important as like if we are professional photographers or artists using images, commun communicating with images, it's important to think about it and be precise. Okay, um, I think um, like. I think we went through like the specific question. I would like to ask you like more general questions that are related to also more maybe general topics, even if my questions were quite general. But uh, uh, I was wondering because, uh, for example, like talking about responsibility as well, but in uh, against the Anthropocene, Anthropocene, TG, De, um, TG Demos, for, um, sorry, uh, wrote that our eye exposure to photographic images implies of. Uh, um, that ecological peris, uh, perils are like mi micro injections or like photographic, oh, sorry, I, I started to again, but uh, that image of ecological perils are like micro injections that make us immune to the real problems affecting the uh, environment. In some way, it creates a critical distance from things that should, uh, that should be felt a bit more emotionally or physically, or I don't know. And what is your like um, uh, opinion about this relationship of like uh, having a certain kind of consciousness about the climate change and uh, the way uh, the production of images can uh, can uh, allow us maybe like to get some uh, 
inside or like or being more sensitive well um that's a super interesting one um i feel like the the production the perception and the use of images are changing so fast all the time i feel like 10 years ago maybe less it was super important to use images to like prove to have a document what is happening on the world like when you think about uh, anthropocene or or um, or ecological issues mm. think about the ocean and the, and plastic islands and like this kind of stuff but i think now it's like there is so many images i, I think how you said like these micro injections like it, it works like a vaccine somehow like you see so many of these images that at some point it's not touching you anymore mm. there is a the direction of the question that you that you were asking yeah yeah totally i'm, I'm curious also to know the opinion of Quentin on the yeah, yeah I'm, I'm agree with benoit um, i mean since 10 years everything is changing so fast and uh, our approach to images as a photographer but also as uh, uh, I would say uh, normal people is very changing. Everyone is, there is a paradoxal aspect in imagery today because um, there is so much image that you see in a day that at some, at some point you are, you are blind to it. Uh, um, everyone know the power of uh, using an image. Uh, Politicals do, uh, publicity do it, uh, on Instagram or people using Instagram as a as a job use it also very very easily. And um, my sensation about it is that um, you have the sensation of um, um, a real or fact images become a fiction and uh, maybe um, uh, an image, uh, uh, I mean, uh, a fictional image becomes your reality. And this merge of sensation make, makes us uh, also very aware, but also very blind to, to, to our world. And, Maybe it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a bit about uh, this paradoxal aspect of seeing image today. I don't know. Yeah, and, and, but there is also like in different ways, but there is also a kind of a toxic uh, atmosphere in the, the background of your works, you know? And uh, as if the air became suffocating and, uh, and, and we don't see human being and uh, in, in both works. So I was also wondering to what extent this absence uh, of people involves connection with new forms of environmental awareness, you know, and uh, even if the representation of the world, uh, if it's representation of the world after the human, basically. Mm -hmm. Don't know who wants yeah. to start. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I just can come back on the, I, I, like the, the, the ecological fact also of images, I think the point that I'm thinking sometimes is also sometimes we think about production of images and how, uh, what impact it have like ecologically, but when you think about what is the ecological impact of Instagram uses, for example. Yeah. Uh, anyway, but for, for coming back on the the presence of humans on images, uh, like this question, which, which is super interesting. Um, I think it's super, like in, in the, the work of Quentin is super strong also with the, the colors, also with this direct, uh, unreal, like there is a kind of di direct unreal because of this alteration of the images. So you, you kind of know that you are not in the document, like in, on the proof or, of something, but there is something really scary somehow there is a there is an unheimlich <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why there is i mean 
I don't know where it comes from that the fact that there is like no human presence, but uh, the fact is that uh, it it gives you the sensation that you are maybe in a post uh, human uh, world, but also for me or uh, for this project, um, I use element as artifact. So. Um, um, if I put uh, some humans uh, uh, in this uh, storytelling, uh, they they act like for y humans entity. So it's an it's another um, argument that I choose to finally uh, put on the side. But it could be it it could come. Uh, in the in the future project, I think, but it's also very related that in my photographic travel, I'm uh, really it's uh, I take it as as a lonely travel and observing um, um, uh, observing in the idea of uh, doing some pictures and I. I'm, uh, at that moment, I was more attracted by uh, environ environment and uh, more than more than humans. But uh, uh, I'm not uh, fixed with this idea. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's super interesting. Um, the question I, I feel a bit the same in the way that when you put humans. Uh, into uh, into the work like for me I, I tried I used to try to put humans and uh, and work with portraits also but it's always bringing too much of narrative in the work and for me it was not like I, I removed them because it was not it, it was bringing too much of, of this narrative and the work was going too far from uh, from what was working and at some point it's become just a confusion mm. But I think in the same way, it's not because there is no human um, direct, uh, there is no human body on mm. the project. It doesn't mean that there is no human presence on the work. Yeah. I feel sometimes you can use like small elements or some um, class, I would say, marks mm. mm -hmm. that, that is bringing enough of this uh, human presence. I think by maybe erasing the human presence of the picture, it can bring the idea of should a human uh, be there or not, or why. And also, it maybe it can it can uh, kill a bit the temporality of the work in the in the scale of the of the humanity. Mm. Just raise a question: Can this work still work uh, after the extension of humanity, and how? How will be the world without uh, after uh, after the extension, and and I think it can be more for me more precise or more interesting to think about these questions this way than trying to stage something with uh, with people. I think it's super hard to include uh, human presence in the work without working on something about human bodies or relationships or connection with the like social and every time yeah. every time you see people in pictures my sensation on, or my reaction is to to ask to myself okay um who is this, who is this person who, what is probably thinking at this moment or outside the photo shoot mm -hmm. uh and uh, for me, it's difficult because it uh, brings uh, humans as individuals, and I would prefer to speak about them as uh, uh, species or things like this. So it's difficult to, for me, uh, in this uh, project uh, or the frame of this project to to include uh, uh, people because they emerge like more individual than than uh, an entities yeah it, yeah 
So you try to have something that is uh, quite uh, eco-centric, like, like with all the elements at, at the same level, like yeah. the apparition of a human make it somehow anthropocentric. That's... Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was, okay, because we've been like uh, running, like, like it's been like more than one hour. So I, I think I might have like one or two questions that are more relating to... Um, to methodologies or displaying your work. But I was uh, wondering if like uh, there is some questions uh, from the public. So maybe on this topic or like more specific questions that we could ask now uh, before it's too late. Um, don't hesitate. Okay. So maybe I'm, I might, still ask uh, one question that might be related also to the way you display your work and like the way you also interact with physical support because both of you showed like that you are very uh, uh, using different ways of, of uh, showing your work. Uh, so I, I'd like to maybe if you could just tell us a little bit about your um, the way you uh, engage with this transversal approach and uh, how you, you, you manage to mix different uh, typologies of image, different media. Um, and in particular, like, how do you deal with the book? Like, that seems to always have like a, a, a very crucial uh, or pivotal uh, place, like in your process. Um, maybe like uh, if you could just uh, develop a little bit on, uh, on, on, on that and that might be the, the last question. Um, um, for myself, from the, the very beginning of the project, I, I knew that I wanted to use the book from, uh, for, as a medium to include uh, uh, arguments of the book into the project. And I was challenging myself uh, uh, by uh, um, how can I transcribe uh, an infinite phenomenal uh, uh, an infinite phenomenal into the, the, the limited space of a book um, and uh, that's why um, this led me to choose some um, kind of binding uh, with a double thickness of the pages to give the sensation of a, of a strip, of a freeze of images that never stops, which refer um, uh, to the cyclic uh, phenomenon of uh, black holes for, for, for the project. And um, also, uh, once the dust jacket is removed, theoretically, um, I like the idea that you could start looking at this book wherever, uh, wherever one wants. Um, then after, uh, and I yes, I like uh, that the books is not only uh, a, a, a support to, to show or or, or, or write some text, but also when it participates to, to, the, to the subject, so it becomes more an object than uh, a, a, a book. And uh, then after this, the question arises as to how to translate all of those ideas made specially for a book into an exhibition space. And uh, and this ex exhibition, exhibition space is changing every time. So you can um, set up a rules that will work each time. Um, so that's why uh, I wanted to the viewer to be immersed in, uh, in this uh, environment with wallpaper and big format uh, in order that they can escape from images and that's why I use also, um, and, and the viewer is also taken by two level of uh, reading. 
uh, one look very close to the wall and the other levees look very away from the wall for an overall uh, view in the space, if the space allows it. But sometimes uh, I made some exhibition in corridor and I use also the same techniques of wallpaper and you're like in a, in a, in a sort of uh, cage and you can uh, have this uh, overall look. And, uh, and yes, it becomes, and each time I try to take benefit from the space in order that uh, uh, I can put a, a, a new layer of sensation for the viewer. But um, yes, uh, uh, that's a very interesting question. And each time also, I think for Benoit, it's the same, you, you try to, also um, put some new idea of how to present the work uh, and in the same time respect uh, the, 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 the idea of uh, the original work. But uh, yes, it's a very interesting, uh, passionating question. Um, mm. uh, and for you, Benoit? I think it's really, for me, it, it's a bit changing all the time, but I, I like to, to think about it. But these days I'm thinking like the, the same work can be really different if it's, uh, if it's in a book, if it's in the studio or if it's in an exhibition. And I think uh, I try to consider every of these options as a different way to look at the work because I think it, it changed a lot. And for example, the temporality of the book is totally different as the temporality of an exhibition. Like the, the book would say, you can keep it kind of, kind of forever. Mm. So there is no really, for me, there is no really experimentation by, by making the book. Like for example, by working on the um, geological index of the landscape, the book, which is the main form, I canceled uh, a lot of ideas that works in the exhibition. For example, the ideas of, um, uh, of the scale of images that I can, I can work in the space, like having different scales of images, but was not working on the book. Uh, if I did it in the book with the with the um, with the design, it was just like a trick or a plan or something. In this way, I don't feel like it works. So I try more for a book to think how a book can work as a book and, uh, and how a book can be perceived as a space. Mm. And I try also not to if I need to make a book, if I would make a book uh, again, I don't think it can work with Escape from Paradise actually, because I don't want to make a book which is just a kind of portfolio of a work or an exhibition catalog. Mm. Uh, I think a book needs to be fed as a book today or for how I work. But in the, for, in the studio, it's, it's different because in the studio, I can really think about the maturity of each piece is like, I want these pieces to be printed on plastic because of the ecological issue of the plastic, for example, or it needs to be straight on the space and not on the wall, or it needs to be on fabric, or what's the weight of the fabric and how all these elements can uh, be more precise on what's need to be the photographs or the piece or the sculpture and how, we can, how I can play with that. And I can make some experiments until finding what works the best for this image, if it's about an image, or if it's an image that need to be in the space with a sculpture, how the material of the sculpture need to be different from the image or the same, and how images and object need to interact together. And uh, in the studio, I can think about all this like more material uh, dialogue between the different uh, pieces of a work. But then in the exhibition, it's a, it's a new kind of playground because I, I feel like I now, now I'm trying to, to set up the sizes of the images, the maturity of the images, what kind of paper, what kind of framing um, and everything just because of, I want, the, I want the pieces and the images to be as precise as I can. And then in the space, I like to be able to open the toolbox, like open the, the trick see what you can take, try to put things together and how to see and check how it, it works with the space and how I can be able to build a connection with the images and the objects, the objects in the space and the viewer with everything. 
So I think it's more like playful in the exhibition. So the, I try not to, to work anymore with the, with plans or exhibition or change the, the sizes or the formats for the exhibition. It's a bit an, exe an exception in, in, the, in Belfast. I, I agree with that. So it's not the good example for what I'm, I'm seeing now, but, uh, but that, that, that's how I, how I work uh, now. And that's how I be happy to work now because I, I feel before I was doing a lot of compromises when you have like more group shows and someone offer you like a linear wall of three meters, but you have a work uh, with 200 images. So it's just impossible. So let's just build the work. You have the pieces and then we have the space to try what can work in the space and, and what can be removed. What, what like in this exhibition that was working. So let's try to work on something else on, on another exhibition and by five or like maybe with two exhibitions, you can show the work in different ways that you can like just perceive different things. And I think it's an experiment that is interesting for me now. And uh, like, like a question also that goes a little bit like in the follow-up of what you said, but uh, Alice is asking like, uh, what's the place of college uh, collage in your practice? Because Benoit speaks about framing spaces, but the elements overlap in the exhibition space and Quentin uh, work is borderless and montage uh, collage seems important but in different ways so if you can also just uh, answer to Alice so that we reach the end so <laughs> uh, if you can maybe just give mm. some information uh, collage collage in this work uh, was a way to escape of uh, um, usual um, layout of putting images uh, side by side, uh, escape from uh, this uh, uh, diptych um, way of showing images. Um, I um, collage for collage for me was a way also to put maybe five or ten images in the same spread. Uh, and I saw it uh, really like uh, another way to to bring images together, and uh, hopefully to have an images that speak about uh, several images, and also to escape of this idea that uh, photography is uh, like one moment. It's, it could be also maybe uh, uh, three or I mean, uh, uh, several moments in the same time. And uh, yes, that, that's, that's for me the, the, the reason of collage. Mm. It, it what came, about you, it came, oh, sorry. It came It came with the construction of a book. Before the book, I, 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 I didn't do collage to to show um, one collage on the wall and frame collage it came with this idea that at at some point i wanted that the layout merge uh, into into um, uh, a freeze or something endless thank you uh, do you want to uh, add something also benoit uh, regarding i don't know exactly what what uh, what kind of collage because I don't feel like it can be collage depending on how you work the assemblage of different elements or images but I don't feel like I'm working with uh, like collage okay it just is if there is more if the question is more precise about like, what what pieces are we talking about I can think about it but like in the general uh, way of a collage I don't think I'm doing that Okay, thank you. Um, so I think we reached the end, but I, I just also wanted to ask this uh, question uh, that also relate to uh, environmental crisis uh, from Yogan. Um, maybe like you can on, try to answer, but it's a very uh, large question. But he, Yogan said like a quick overwrite. Uh, so we are slowly coming out of a global pandemic that is the result of us bumping into edges of uh, the physical world. We still have to tackle climate change, uh, a process that will put a cap on what we can afford to do in this world. 
In this talk, however, we are aiming at pushing the limits and breaking new grounds. I wonder how can uh, one possibly reconcile those two polar opposite imperatives? If you want to try to give an answer. <laughs> I'm not sure I, I understand really well the question about what, what are the two. But I think it's this drive of like somehow pushing the limits, trying to always go further in one certain direction, and uh, also having all these restrictions that are kind of caused by the, the actual uh, pandemic. And uh, that's it's a little bit two directions or the opposite direction, but. Uh, that that might be you know difficult to deal with. Unfortunately, you're gonna have to leave, so you cannot really precise the question. But I just wanted to mm. to ask you if you. I would say that uh, when I was uh, thinking about the project, when I was constructed it, I didn't ask myself um, what what could I show to speak about the climate changing um, um, beyond any photographic uh, discourse i think for, my, for myself i have a razor naive approach I, like a child uh, wood rose i like to to create word and uh, at that time the the word uh, that i describe in this book it's quite uh, uh, toxic and uh, and uh, post-apocalyptic. Uh, I think uh, if um, I, uh, I I had to do another project in this system, maybe I would choose uh, um, uh, uh, arguments more positive that gives maybe a solution or more a positive aspect and not uh, only uh, um, uh, uh, a post-apocalyptic feeling. I don't know if it answers the question, but uh, uh, that came in my mind when I... Yeah, I think it's, it's good. Benoit, do you want to add something? Yeah. Um, I, I, feel interest, uh, I feel like it's interesting this way we, we think about photography by pushing the limits and how we, we, we said like pushing the limits when we talk about materiality or hanging off the, the print from the wall because basically yeah, i think for the classic photography world and how we have seen photography in exhibition in museums in the in the 20th century and before of course it's a bit new but if you check in the if you have a look in the more art history or contemporary art history like the painters was doing this in the 30s also before so i think I think there is no real auto congratulation to give us to just experiment new materials and space and just open book of, of painters, for example, like we are doing some new things. And I think that's great for photography. And I think that's great. Like viewer, viewers are appreciate uh, like it when it when it happens, like there is a lot of things uh, in the environmental uh, crisis topic. Um, I think it's really interesting, like for, for myself, I, I'm not working, I'm not, a, I'm not doing documentary, so, so I, I don't make like researches uh, in a way to have a, a synthesis, a synthesis at the end. I don't have a like proper observation of a global problem or issue, and I don't propose any uh, solution to resolve it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I can try to observe the world and also the, the paradox that I can see and work with different paradox, which I feel interesting. And uh, I'm super, I'm always pretty happy to finish a work or to show a work and see what people perceive in the work and what I can perceive on my own perception, but that I didn't realize when I started or when I was working on the, on the work. So I think that's something in conscious uh, about all this question, it's just like sweating out of the work because it's sweating out of the work. Mm -hmm. And I think this is, this is super, uh, super interesting. And, and I had an, another idea that I took a note. 
Frage ist. Well, maybe if it comes later, but I think it's quite a good way of uh, talking about uh, the vision of the future uh, by looking at uh, old books of painting. <laughs> so that's an interesting uh, conclusion. Uh, meanwhile, like uh, Denis uh, also like asked a question uh, for Benoit. Uh, when you said that at the end of your index book, you talk about using AI and a Python, a Python program to generate the text for the classification, <laughs> which, uh, which was the most important element constricting the index, the human or machine input. So thank you, Denise, for the question. So uh, if, you are, <laughs> if you allow, uh, Benoit, uh, the fact is that it's a bit of coincidence, but I actually work on the text with Benoit and uh, Aris, so we kind of work together on this uh, on this text and uh, to say take the, the freedom to answer uh, so the idea was uh, to take a series of elements that were inspired by the the categories uh, uh, that uh, Benoit used for the classification of uh, of the book uh, and uh, so we took uh, texts from uh, mostly wikipedia entrances created this kind of auto-generated text um, with Aris, who is a linguist that, that works like in a quantitative uh, analysis of literature. And uh, basically the, the idea was like to take the results and then like to, um, to select some portion that could work as, uh, as legend that, that, were, that were very as, uh, at this edge of like something that could be real Uh, but that is actually uh, completely constructed. So that was a way of like uh, finding uh, the correct <laughs> caption for the, the images uh, of uh, Benoit that are also always in this in between uh, and uh, where we always, always need to be a little bit aware of, is it uh, a real image or a really landscape or is it something that has been built uh, from scratch? So we kind of created this in between with the text and I think it's worked quite well, I hope. So that's, I think, do you want to add something, Benoit, or maybe we can? <laughs> no, for me, uh, I'm Thanks. happy with the text because I, I didn't want to, like again, a book is not supposed to be a portfolio of a, of a work and for me it was super interesting to just give the space uh, to Joel to work on something kind of inspired by the book, using elements from the book. And I was super happy that he used uh, words to work with them because I think images and language is something super different. Uh, and I think it was super interesting to see how words and language can play a bit the same game that I was playing with images. So, so yeah, I think it was a, yeah, just a space in the book to have this experience was super, super great. Wow. Thank you. It was not uh, my question, but I'm happy that I could it. So thank you. thanks a lot for this uh, very uh, thoughtful and rich uh, presentation. It, I think it was great. And uh, I'm uh, very happy that uh, we had so much uh, to, uh, to eat like and to see today. And uh, thank you for all the participants. And uh, voila, I'll let uh, you... Uh, I don't know exactly how to end up now, but like uh, if uh, Clara, or are you going to say something, a little goodbye uh, for our part? I think we are we're done. Thanks a lot. Thank you.